Craft Brood Sports Cincinnati Style is brought to you by Minuteman Tickets. Football season is in full swing and basketball is here. There's only one spot you should be heading to to get your tickets, and that's Minuteman Tickets. We love Minuteman. They're Ohio guys and they're sports fans. They're not going to screw you over like other ticketing places. It's not just football or basketball either. They've got it all. Baseball, hockey, theater, rib cook-offs, it doesn't matter. Hit them up, MinutemanTickets.com, or give them a call at 614-943-3000 and avoid all of the fees. That's 614-943-3000. Tell them you heard about them right here on Craft Brood Sports Cincinnati Style. Craft Brood Sports Cincinnati Style is also brought to you by More Labs. Drink one bottle of morning recovery while you're partying and bounce back quickly the next morning, guaranteed. Go to morelabs.com and use the code SPORTS at checkout for 20% off your non-subscription purchase. What is up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Craft Brood Sports Cincinnati Style. I am Mike. With me, as always, is Scott. Joe, hanging out behind the computer over there. Joe, how you feeling this week, bud? What it do, baby? Every time. Uh, this is Craft Brood Sports Cincinnati Style. Scott, for the Cincinnati? F- Cincinnati Style, for the first time on this show. The, the Bengals, Bengals didn't, didn't lose, lose baby. All right. No else, no else. And actually, I could argue, we got a W this weekend on the bye week. Thanks to Miami, we got a W. We're getting to that in just a second, but Feeling you might great. be right. Feeling great right now. We got a lot to get through this week. We're going to talk Bengals uh, and, and the start of the Ryan Finley era. It is here. AJ Green Ish. may be back. Who knows? It's about to be a banana second half of the season. <laughs> uh, we're also going to talk some Xavier Musketeers basketball starting off the season with a Stay dump. back! You see football getting a little bit of a scare. You see basketball tipping off against Ohio State. And, of course, some Cyclones hockey. Uh, We're going to do that hockey this week. Let's I'm do glad, it. I'm glad you went deep in depth because I was like, what happened with the Cyclones this week? Oh, good. Scott got me. Scott. I got you, man. I got you. <laughs> There's no way we're about to introduce it last week saying, we're going to be all in on this. We're really – we're going to – like, and then the second week. Oh, yeah, we didn't even talk about Cyclones this week. No, I was on it. I'm really glad. Thank you. So ready. we're going we're to just <laughs> turn it over to you. You are going to be our Chance the Rapper for the Cyclones hockey segment this Fair week. Fair enough. <laughs> Let's get right into this Bengals talk, baby, uh, because I'm super pumped. The Bengals pulling in the number one pick overall through the bye week. I'm so, I'm so jazzed. Joe, hit us with that. All right, here we go, everybody. It's the Ryan Finley era starting right now. It's game time. Here we go. <laughs> Finley taking over. AJ Green coming back. Maybe. <laughs> no rap air horn on that Maybe. one. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, that's a fair. That's a fair non rap air horn. No, 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 that's fair. Maybe. That's fair. <laughs> well, that's the worst part about that this week. Like, I got super jazzed because Zach Taylor was like, AJ Green is gonna be playing on Sunday, and then he was like. It was a rough practice. AJ Green is day to day. I mean, at least he's being honest. So, as of this recording, uh, AJ Green possibly. might. We'll what? see. Maybe. Uh, Maybe. How impactful do you think AJ Green would be for a guy like Finley making his first start? Like, do you think that is a difference maker that yes. Finley needs? Yes. Or do you think it doesn't matter because? The offensive line is garbage. No, I mean, the offensive line can be garbage. The offensive line is garbage. But if you're talking about being a rookie quarterback who's never made an NFL start, having an all-pro wide receiver, yeah, that's that's a good thing. You never, you're never going to turn that down if you're You're not going to turn it down, but I feel like A.J. Green, like there is so much being made. Are you made. saying is it going to be the difference between a win and a loss? Probably not. But if you're... Not even that, just there's so much being made about him coming back, and it's like you got a rookie quarterback behind a garbage offensive line. A.J. Green isn't going to be that downfield threat. It's going to be, oh, Green ran another slant. Cool. That's, that's <laughs> fine, but he's still – but, I mean, you still want him out there if you're him. Well, like, you do if you're Ryan Finley, yeah, you still fair. want him out there, period. Like, it just – He's somebody out there that you can rely upon. So what happens when Green comes back and it's like, oh, A.J. Green had three receptions for 26 yards? It won't be his fault. 
<laughs> running <laughs> Philly's fault. <laughs> Let's be honest. Can't throw the ball to himself, right? <laughs> That's how that goes. Uh, how long does this Ryan Finley era last? That's the question that that we have coming into this week. Uh, obviously, Zach Taylor wants to see what he's got in Finley, figure out what we got to do in the draft coming up now that we got that number one pick. Um, for now. For now. Sorry, I don't mean to bore you, Scott. I'm really sorry. Oh, but stop. This is... <laughs> Uh, how long does it last? How long does Finley last under center? Does he make it through so Sunday? So they split eight games. Yeah, 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 yeah. He makes it through this week. Um, I would say that with there being eight games left, that Finley starts four of them. So you think Dalton comes back for four games? Like the last four? You think Finley goes four straight and then Dalton ends the year with the last four? I'm, not saying, I, I'm not saying. I'm just saying I think that Andy Dalton has four more starts. As a Bengals quarterback, period. Mm. I'm not saying how or when they come. I'm just saying that he's got four more starts. Hmm. Okay. That's a weird take. It's a very lukewarm take. <laughs> to just be like, hey, he's got four starts somewhere well, in there. Well, you want me to nail down the No, I'm not saying nail down the dates, but I'm saying I mean, like, like, stick to, is, does Finley get benched? Is it that he's that hot garbage that they're like, fine, whatever, Dalton, you're no, back No, 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 no. Or like, Finley, then why do it? Then why Finley gets hurt. Uh, but okay, so he gets hurt. You're saying he's out for four weeks, or you think? He no, I mean I don't think he starts bit? the first four weeks. I think like he gets hurt the third weekend, and then Dalton comes back in, and then you get Finley the last game. Oh god, how terrible would that be? Yeah. That'd be so terrible. <laughs> okay, so that brings me to my next bit. Let's say let's play this out, and that's what happens. Finley gets hurt. Dalton comes back, and Dalton's back just in time for that game against the the Dolphins. <laughs> When he's trying to prove himself as a decent trade piece, he's trying to do well. Not even a trade piece, just in general, like an NFL starting caliber quarterback. He's auditioning for the other 31 teams in the NFL. And then screws over the Bengals. Wouldn't that be? That'd be his parting shot. <laughs> that, and actually, that would be poetic. It would be. After, after the way they treated him? I was going to yeah. say, if after everything that Andy's been through in Cincinnati. In fact, you know what? I'm calling it. He's only going to start that one more game. Somehow circumstances one? are going to end up that Andy Dalton is only starting the <laughs> Dolphins game. Finley gets knocked out in the first quarter or something. Like, okay, so maybe he doesn't start it. But he plays majority of that game, leads the Bengals to their only victory of the season over the Dolphins, makes it so they don't get the number one overall pick. That's what's happening. Fire up that hot take barbecue because, yes, that is a <laughs> spicy hot take. That is crispy, well done. <laughs> I love it. I kind of want it to happen at this point. Wouldn't that be so fitting it of would everything? Be, it would be such like for a all Bengals parties way. involved, like yes. the Bengals, Dalton, Finley, like everything to happen in that way. And that'd be the only win that they get. So it's like Finley isn't part of any of the wins. <laughs> so he gets hurt. So he doesn't get credit for that. Dalton gets credit for the lone win that knocks him out of the number one. The so Bengals, everybody hates you know, Dalton. Get, yeah, yeah. One. The Bengals win the one game and it's meaningless. And you know what would happen? The one. Dalton. Dolphins oh, fans, God. Dolphins fans would all be donating fourteen dollars to Andy Dalton's charity, charity like yeah. the, like everybody or ends up doing, erecting a statue of Andy Dalton down in Miami. Because I mean, you know, they put up, <laughs> they, they retired Marino's jersey for the Heat. So uh, you know. it's true, Miami does not understand how to retire jerseys. So they would, you're right, they would be like Andy Dalton, you're going up in the rafters because <laughs> you thank for, you for the Marlins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a Dalton Marlins jersey is very retired. Like, yeah, we got this, right? <laughs> Just has to be a jersey and a Miami sport, right? <laughs> cool. We're on it. So let's look ahead at this game on Sunday. We got the Ravens coming into town. Oh, good God. The Ravens at, uh, coming off a big win against the Patriots where – they were nobody saw that. Coming. They were underdogs, three point underdogs going right. into that. Joe had to throw at the degenerate dartboard of doom on the uh, the regular show because of this game. Uh, they they end up destroying the Patriots, coming in with a seventy six percent chance to win according to uh, ESPN. Uh, the line is surprising. Like I, this is whenever there's a double digit line in the NFL, people say it's a big line, but. I would have thought this line this would be... actually seems small. Yes, <laughs> it, the Bengals are getting 10 points in this game, which seems like easy money to bet on the Ravens. The, it, I mean, do you honestly think the Bengals come within 10 points of the Baltimore Ravens in this game? I mean, maybe, I guess you could argue the letdown after the Patriots game, that this is they're looking past the Bengals. They, well, whatever, it's Cincinnati. But you've got 
this offensive line, a rookie making his first start, maybe AJ Green. I mean, I, there's a ten this point has seems all crazy. the makings for just a disaster. But it also has all the makings for the Bengals pulling out a W, right? Like that's if you look at it. If you look at it, this is the type of game that the Bengals win. And it's like, how the hell did you pull that one off? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. They just do. Like, this is this is when Lamar Jackson has his really bad game where Bill Polian can be like, see, I told you he's just a running back. <laughs> After he just apologized and was like, no, nah, I was wrong about Lamar Jackson. Lamar comes out just super flat against the Bengals, and Bill Polian's like, see, this is what I was talking about. I take back that apology. That's fair. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Anything that can happen and would happen that just sounds irrational AF will happen to the Bengals. Yeah, that's true. So so them winning against this Ravens team <laughs> against all odds on brand. The Ravens are averaging 31 points a game, whereas the Bengals are averaging 15 and a half. <laughs> Jesus, man. <laughs> That is brutal, man. On top of that, uh, the Ravens are only giving up 22 points a game, whereas the Bengals are giving up 26. So this has all the makings of a blowout. This is essentially going to be the Lamar Jackson show. Yeah. No, and I mean, I think it will be, too. Like, I just, I, they're going to go nuts. I think the problem, too, is the Bengals are, uh, like, the defense, and we've talked about it before, where the defense is the bright spot in the team. They're just on the field forever, and they end up giving up large chunks. But and, uh, this defense, much like every other defense across the NFL, just, like, isn't equipped to handle this offense. Dude, like, a guy I mean, like Lamar Jackson is it, yeah. he's a freak. Like, I mean, the the... The Patriots' defense coming into this game was like historically good at what they were allowing, and you know the the quarterback percentages and yeah. QBR that they were giving to the quarterbacks. Like it was historically good, and they just shat all over it. <laughs> like it was like, <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's cool. And so it's just like you could throw, you know, if you're the Bengals' defense, it's just like hey, they got a nice solid defense. They're somewhere middle of the road. Bend but there's, don't break. Right? Yeah. Th there's no way that they're they're somehow going to find the magic elixir to stop Lamar Jackson. Although the weirdest thing is there's been a few games where he hasn't been, you know, super Lamar. I, I mean, it's not as if he's unstoppable and the chargers did have that right. formula in the playoffs last year. So, I mean, there is a blueprint to beat him. I just don't think you can do it consistently enough and you've got to have absolute playmakers well and like all of the positions that matter on defense and so i just i mean like the, the Bengals just don't have the person that's what i was going to say the bank in order to beat a guy like lamar jackson you need a team that has sound open field tackling and that is not the Bengals yeah. defense this defense once somebody gets into that open field it's like pfft, screw it. this is a 20 yard gain at <laughs> least uh and and they do not have the horses to be able to stop lamar jackson so i Correct. i think if you're betting on this one, I would go ahead and take the Ravens to cover. And I, I mean, show. it's one of those that you wish that it goes the other way and, and something freak happens and Finley balls out because there's no tape on him and people are like, oh, this dude is pretty, uh, he, he ends up looking pretty good because nobody knows what to expect. None of that is going to happen. No, there's going to be no surprises. It's going to be a the, long Sunday. <laughs> the outcome or anything, it just... We know what's going to happen. This is one of those super predictable ones. So do you think the Bengals can hold on to that number one pick? No. You think they beat Miami? I said all season that I think that, that they will still win enough games to not finish with the number one overall pick. And now all they have to do is win two games. Or, they just well, have to win, win the one. They if just they beat, have to beat Miami, Miami they lose the yeah, tiebreaker. Yeah, they lose the pick. Yeah. Well, and that's assuming that Miami doesn't win the rest of the way. And Miami likely won't. They and they likely won't. But I'm just saying, like assuming right. that, like people were saying, you know, Miami 0 and 16 for sure, and then they went and beat the Jets. So I mean, there's still a chance, and they get to play the Jets again. What's more likely, so that. the Bengals going 0 and 16, or the 49ers going 16 and 0? 49ers going 16 and 0. You think that's a better bet? No, no, no. I think that's more unlikely. Oh, I said more likely. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. More likely. More which unlikely. one? Which one do you think happens? Uh, if you have to pick one of those two, gun the, to your head. The the, the Bengals. Uh, the Bengals going zero and sixteen. No, 
The Bengals getting a win is what's going to happen. Yeah, okay, Niners, so you say, so then you're saying the Niners going 16 and 0 is more likely to happen than the Bengals going defeated throughout the year. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I think it I feel like in the NFL it, and the Bengals have shown that like they've they've come close to getting dubs anyways. Like that I feel I know, I but feel it's, like just, that's, it's just so hard. <laughs> I think it's harder to go Winless than it is to go on. It really is harder to go winless. <laughs> I think you're right about yeah, that. Yeah, like I mean, you it just really like, be trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because like how many win? I, uh, funny enough, I say that, and then I'm like, well, there's been more winless seasons than there have been, you know, <laughs> undefeated seasons. But it's just like you stumble into wins. I mean, look at that. L- look at the Dolphins. They're absolutely not trying to win any games, and they beat the Jets. Just cause. You think the front office was like super pissed about that? Like they were like they're watching that, just gritting their teeth. Like yeah. I don't think they're gritting their teeth, but they're definitely like there is no rhyme or reason. Like there, like <laughs> there, there is no real way to tank in the NFL. Like it, it, in other sports, it's so much easier. Like you know, in the NBA and and, and MLB, it is easy to put out a, a, a team on the field that you're right. like there ain't no shot at this team winning in the nfl like it just so match up and scheme heavy and you know these guys are playing for for things that you you know don't don't expect even the 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 ones that you're just like ah well they're just undrafted guys or whatever it's like well they're playing to keep their jobs or they're playing to get that next contract or whatever like it's not like in the other ones. The the no guaranteed contracts really throws everything askew. <laughs> so like where there are guaranteed contracts, there are more guaranteed losses. <laughs> like the pirates can go out and be like, yeah, we could go on O and one hundred sixty two if we don't wanted care. to. <laughs> like we could arrange this to happen, <laughs> but we don't need to. We can still manage to only win about fifty games, and we'll be good at that number one pick. All right. Well, we we're. All in agreement here. Bengals are about to go zero and nine. They're about to hit that zero and nine. Mark, oh yeah, right? yeah. Like there's no, no doubt. As much as we think it, maybe there's this outside chance, and I like to have this pipe dream. It ain't gonna happen. So looking forward to next week where we sit here and go. All right, now what do we do? Do we <laughs> do, are we gonna go zero and ten? Oh Jesus! Right. Uh, but let's let's switch gears here. Let's do that hockey a little bit. You want to do that hockey? Sure. Let's, right, do, let's that do that hockey, hockey uh, and talk a little Cyclones action here. Well, that's a good that's a good transition. That's yeah. a good sound right there, Joe. I like it. Uh, I like that goal uh, that goal sound. So the the Cyclones, Scott. I I would like to turn it over to you, Chance the Rapper, uh, to <laughs> to give us the Cincinnati Cyclones update. Well, I was sitting there when I was you know looking at it. Uh, I thought. Oh, wow. Like minor league hockey does it like we talked about in the NHL last week on the regular show where it's like they play a series yes. or they, they play more than just the one game and then, you know, flip it over to the next city. So they had two games this, you know, since we've been off against the Brampton Beast, which I wasn't able to figure out where Brampton was. I don't know what, what a name. I the have, Beast? I, I was just going to say, that's The a Beast good is pretty name. solid. But I could not figure out where Brampton was. <laughs> I don't know what I did with this. But on... Uh, Ontario. Ah, Ontario. Oh, that, would explain, that would explain why I have no idea where Brampton is. <laughs> But anyway, on Saturday they lost to him four to one, and then they came back on Sunday and won three to two. Um, you know, so, all right. You know, they went fifty percent. Well, we were <laughs> we were off. It's it's not bad, not bad. Uh, and then right now it's dollar. We talked about it. Dollar uh, dollar beer night. Dollar dog night. Going God, I love Fort Wayne night. playing the comments. So uh, it's also the dog night. Like oh, the, bringing the bringing the yeah, dogs the bark at the okay. Rink or whatever hang on, they call can it. we stop with all of this? Bringing your dog. I love dogs. I'm a big I dog have, guy. I love dogs too, but I hate. Can oh, we I not bring those. dogs to sporting events? Like, let's, please stop. Yes, this it's is the crazy. Worst. <laughs> and then, like, it's always like you got uh, like dogs just sitting in seats. Next. I'm like, why is this <laughs> dog? What is happening here? And then, of course, there's like Karen who's got her dog in her purse, and that dog's like yappy and yeah. barking at every other dog yeah. like i'm trying to watch the game can you shut that dog up didn't think i'd have to say that at a sporting event <laughs> also there's just dogs roaming around eating all the popcorn that's but it's an awful experience and the whole time i'm just like where where are these dogs going to the bathroom Agreed. where does it happen especially at a game like the cyclones where it's indoors at least the when they do the reds games and the it's bark in the park at least it's like all right well you're outside 
it's still gross to see a dog taking a deuce in like the, the middle of the concession stand line. Right. But at least you're outside. You're inside a stadium, man. You're in an arena. Yeah. I can't. I can't do I, that. I'm just not a fan. Like as much as I love dogs, like it's just. Having them at a sporting event, there's just too much going on. Joe, are you on board with bringing dogs to no. sporting events? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Hang on, let me rephrase this question real quick. Joe, are you on board with dogs? Sure. Okay. <laughs> all right. I just had to make sure. I had to set the, I had to level set there a little bit. Uh, all right. So right now, uh, the Cyclones are actually up five four. Right. I think they're yeah. leading currently uh, against the Comet. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's about all you can say. Is is cool. This season, here's this is where I struggle with hockey because I feel like the season is so long that like it's tough to get into it this early. I really struggle to get into it this early. It, I mean, it is tough, like to especially to follow before you know about halfway through the season, where it's just like, all right, they're playing all these games, and not saying that they're meaningless, but you know that as far as the final schedule, they they've got so many games to be able to make up anything that they lose right now that it's like oh you see where they split and it's just like oh okay well there's still plenty of time well we need to make up some ground because the cyclones currently sitting in ninth place in the western conference um let's look at these team names just based on team names in this division are they better than minor league hockey or minor league baseball i it's it's really close. I mean, minor league baseball has some really good team names, but looking at this list uh, just here in, in these divisions here, the Orlando Solar Bears? <laughs> Dude, what is a solar bear? I have no idea. The Florida Everblades? On, that's pretty good. That's a good name. I like that I mean, one. the Brampton Beast, that's what first started my, my yeah. brain going on. I like it. The Greenville Swamp Rabbits. That's a team <laughs> name right there. Rabbit. What does this logo look like? I got to see what the Greenville Swamp Rabbits look like because I feel like that's a hat that I would. That's a, Ooh, that's a I'd hat. wear that. That's I'd a wear good that. hat. Think of that as a sweat. <sighs> Wearing that sweater? I, like, I really oh. like that. It's tough to cheer against the Swamp Rabbits. His stick is a carrot. <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't even catch that. <laughs> Oh, but it's but it's, it's like carrot. smoke. It's like smoke though. It's like <laughs> it's, not yeah, even instead the of the green stock. It's yeah, great. dude, that's oh, dude. I really and like am I seeing that rabbits. correctly? Are the Swamp Rabbits uh, a minor league affiliate of Carolina? So they're a, a, a minor league affiliate of the Jerks. <laughs> oh, that dude, makes this team really tough I, to cheer against. I really like that logo. <laughs> that's a great logo. The Swamp Rabbits logo. And, and apologies to nobody who's looking at this. Go Google search the Greenville Swamp Rabbits because that's a fantastic logo. Uh, Toledo Walleye is one that I've I've always kind of been a Their fan logo's of. Their logo is pretty good. Uh, I mean, the whole well, and, team. and just the fact that you're the walleye, that's, a, that's pretty solid. Yeah. The Indy Fuel. Why does every Indianapolis team have, have to, to go back hey, to the Indy 500? I get it. You're, you've got <laughs> racing and stuff going on, but why does it all have to be related to that? Uh, Wheeling Nailers. Joe pulling up the Wheeling Nailers, but that logo is garbage. I feel like they've changed that recently. I don't remember. I, I remember the Nailers logo not being so not being Jason, so L A L A Kings looking. meets yeah L A <laughs> Kings meets Jason. <laughs> it looks very generic. Joe, pull up the uh, the Indy Fuel logo real quick because I just want to see what this looks like. I just it, it, I feel like this should just be a gas station like that. No, nah, this it, is weak. It's pretty awful. It's it's terrible that Indianapolis teams continue to rely on cars and and the Indy 500 and kill stand by. that drum. Uh get a new shtick Indiana. That's like if every Cincinnati team was like something to do with pigs cuz it's porkopolis here. This yeah. is stupid. I would hate it. The Iceman, the Jacksonville Iceman? That's not bad though. I mean, it's weird. It, it's weird, weird looking, but it's not terrible. It's better than the Indy Fuel. Yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. But you're not, you know. Wait, hold on. Adirondack? The Adirondacks have a team? <laughs> yeah, pull up the Orlando Solar Bears. That's a great play on words. Like, that is a real. Ah, it's a that's polar sweet. Bear with the, oh, with man, guns. The guns He out. is jacked. This polar bear is yoked for the Orlando Solar Bears. I like that. And the Florida and Everblades, the Everblades are good well, too. Well played. Uh, 
Man, all right. I... For, for a state that doesn't know anything about ice, <laughs> they, they, they've got their minor league hockey nailed down as far as logos and names. All right, so if you're picking this, uh, you're picking this league based on just on Swamp Rabbits number one. Swamp Rabbits pretty good. <laughs> that, pretty good. They, they came out strong, the man. Newfoundland Growlers. I hope that's beer related. I hope it's just a 32 ounce or 64 ounce growl. It's that's a, a dog, like a. <sighs> really like that that's awful weak sauce that's what that is newfoundland growlers just moved out and swamp rabbits are definitely the go-to i love the swamp rabbits that's do that awesome. hockey <laughs> <laughs> this has been cyclones talk here on uh craft root sports cincinnati style where we talked about the cyclones for 10 seconds and then talked about the rest of else. the league <laughs> <laughs> let's talk some xavier basketball Whew. because xu is back baby we went out there and zipped them up at the end of the game I love it. We we can't use that one. It, that's just too short. But I I do dig that super quick as a transition. Uh, the Musketeers come out first se- uh, first game of the season. They beat Jacksonville. They held Jacksonville to twenty two first half points. Yeah, I mean it wasn't even close in the first half. They and they looked really efficient doing it. Like it was. It was very good to see after la- the way last season went. Yeah, it started off right, but at the same time, it's Jacksonville. So if you don't come out and dominate, it's going to be like, what the hell? Well, is Well, yeah, going but on I'm just saying, team? like, it's like they don't get more props, but it's like they did what they were supposed to do. Right, so, you got to I mean, come they, out and win. They look good, and there's no questioning them. Where it's like, oh, well, they struggled. They're like, no, 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 no. they came out and held the team. That's way beneath them to 22 points in a single half. And then, you know, in the second half, it was whatever because it was mostly backups and whatever. And, it, you know, everything was pretty even. But, I mean, they they looked good. Four mussies and double digits. Uh, it, the only thing that I thought was odd was uh, good, good and struggling. Like, the fact that he's, like, coming into this year as a senior. Right. And, and last year and just Quentin Gooden is going to be needed for more than five points. The Throughout. only thing that I thought was odd was contest. Najee Marshall wearing a long sleeve, like a, a t shirt underneath his jersey. Well, I, I didn't like that. that. I, I always uh, hate that. It's the worst. I'm like, long sleeves under, <laughs> under a short sleeve jersey. You know what it reminds me of? Every time I see a t shirt underneath a jersey, I think of JJ Reddick. Every single time. Ah. Because JJ Reddick, I was like, what, what back knee are you hiding, JJ Reddick? Take your t shirt off. And Marshall comes out last night in a t shirt. And it's not even like, if it was like the Under Armour t shirt that's no, like, it's just a regular, it's like, cool. like, he was rocking like, like picked up a five dollar t shirt at foot right. action. I was like, dude, you cannot wear that. Get you one at the t shirt table. <laughs> How many kills? Oh, oh I don't Jesus. know. What was the kill count? Do we I don't know? know. I missed that. I didn't I didn't see. We don't we gotta research this kill count because that I mean clearly But uh I don't know if you saw it on Twitter. The 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 Twitter beef that was going on. No, I did not see the, the Twitter beef. The young generation at Xavier versus the, the old the old heads, us. Ooh. Ooh, wait, we're in that generation now? We're in the we're in the sit down in the bowl and not cheer and get mad at people standing up? Yeah, but oh. I don't know if I disagree with this one. Cause so Xavier put out a video this week and just like a a tweet where it's like, hey, this season when we get these, you know, these kills, you guys are gonna bark like a dog and you know, stand up and cheer and do all this. Uh our friend Patrick Cody had a problem with that. Saying, you know, uh, I don't know why Xavier needs to, you know, do stuff like this and ha- have it's like we don't need to be instructed what Wait, to do and just so, let it happen organically. So P. Cody, the the biggest Xavier fan either of us know, yeah, is anti barking during after a kill. Let let let, let me quote him on this because he took. Quite. Because I gotta be honest, I'm anti barking after a kill just because it sounds dumb. But like, yeah, sure. I want, I would rather like everybody so, chance kill so, after so kill. So Xavier like, had sent kill, out, kill, right? Kill. That's the cooler Xavier way. Xavier had barking. sent out the tweet that they said, "Hey, Xavier Nation, get ready to be part of our pregame light show. Download the game day app, blah blah blah, and then you know do this whole kill thing." And, and Cody had retweeted, "Man, 
boy, Xavier really doesn't like an organic atmosphere. Wear this color, bark like a dog, download this app. <laughs> Some fans took exception to that. <laughs> oh, Even yeah. recently recently departed Hanky McSpanky was like, oh, this one right here is a bad take. Wait, wait, wait. Hanky McSpanky yes. went after P. Cody? Retweeted oh, him. My God. Retweeted him and said, this tweet right here is a bad take. Oh, dude. And basically got everybody who was just like, oh, you know, saying that, like, Patrick Cody was an old footy duddy and like you know doesn't enjoy doesn't enjoy fun of his basketball games. Got called all the way out. <laughs> I hate that we're in the old school of this. Uh, no, but I, I agreed with him. I agreed with him too. I just like, well, not only that, it was just like, why does Xavier have to like do all this? Stuff? No, I'm like, on board with doing something for the kills because if if Travis Steele is going all in on the kills, and we talked about it last week. I love this stat because it's ridiculous that if you if it happens seven times in a game, 98% of the time you win the game. If Steele is this absurd about this stat, then go all in on it. I'm cool with that. But don't bark. There's no relation to dogs when it comes to Xavier. No. That's that's crazy. That's a yeah. that's terrible. Um, all right, looking ahead for Xavier. Uh, Joe, why don't you pull up who they got coming up here because I don't know what the, the schedule is. I, I like. believe they play Sienna. Santa's oh, okay. coming up on Friday. Oh, all right. I, I so. did put that in the doc, but you know, it's cool. Just ignore it. <laughs> oh, it <laughs> Playing right. Friday again. <laughs> Playing right. Friday at home against Sienna. <laughs> you couldn't read. Right there? <laughs> like, I specifically right did that so we wouldn't find ourselves in a position where we're like, hey, uh, don't know what's happening next. No, no, no. Sienna is at I home. don't pay attention to you. I don't <laughs> know, man. <laughs> What the hell? I don't even know what's going on here. Oh anymore. my god! <laughs> so they play tonight when the uh, show when released. the show releases. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, right. Yeah, later on tonight. Uh, yeah, Xavier. I'm just like go Xavier ahead and Sienna, spoil I knew that. Yeah, I, I was gonna say go ahead and spoil that magic. <laughs> uh, all right. So <laughs> Jesus <laughs> man. <laughs> well, I mean. Let's spoil some magic some more and talk about UC playing Ohio State. Sure. <laughs> Going on right now when this is released Friday. Kill, 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 kill. That's what it's got to be. Why are we barking? Yes, I'm going to talk over that uh, drop every time. Uh, UC playing Ohio State as we're recording this. Uh, UC was actually up at halftime. Surprisingly, they were, they were shocking the world. Not really just the state of Ohio because uh, – Everybody outside of Ohio really doesn't care about this UC Ohio State matchup, uh, but UC had the lead at halftime. Uh, have relinquished that lead as we're recording this one. Um, they they had given it up. Uh, I think Ohio State charged back early in the second half. Um, up oh, there you go, fifty five fifty one. Currently with four minutes to go. It okay. So would you have expected UC to hang this tough with Ohio State? To start off the season, no, I, I mean Ohio unranked State. UC, right? Yeah, no Ohio State. What are they? Nineteenth coming out of the gates? Uh, they are. I can't read. Eighteenth. They're one ahead of Xavier. They're right. There okay, at, yeah. At, yeah. I was gonna say. I was like, I knew they were right there in the low teens, and it's just like, uh, didn't expect that. <laughs> up at up in Columbus. In Columbus, yeah. Odd way for things to start out, but I mean, Ohio State did take the lead eventually, so they're where. The, You'd expect it to go. But. Does this give you any fear uh, looking ahead at the Crosstown shootout? Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, I th still think the Bearcats have just, they've lost enough. They didn't have much offense to begin with. They were already a defensive first team under Cronin, yep, yep. and like that wasn't going to change losing the only offensive guys that they had the last year. So, no. I, I'm not worried at all. Like, they do if, have two if Xavier guys. doesn't win this Crosstown shootout, then there's real problems. All right, let's play this out then. Xavier doesn't win the Crosstown shootout. Is Travis on the hot seat at that point? No, I don't think so because it's still only second year. But, I mean, he's definitely – I think it's warm. It's well, at least a say, warm seat. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's Pete not Cody ideal. Cody would be tweeting about firing him. It's, <laughs> it's, not, <laughs> it's not ideal, but I also it would also depend on how the rest of the season went. Because, I mean, he could lose that game but still – yeah, yeah, go yeah. do yeah. fairly well. But it'd be like if he lost that game two years in a row, but also struggled this year when they were supposed to be back to doing well. Yeah, then it definitely would be warm. But I, I don't think that this game. And the problem is, and I've been saying this. Like, let's go on ahead and talk about this. I've been saying this since they moved it back to the the individual school sites. They got to go back to this game being in February. 
Yes. This yes. game being in December, be in December before things really get underway is such a travesty. Like it's We are literally not... a month away from the Crosstown shootout. How does that happen? We're a month away, and there's only like five or six games that happen by the time right. that game has started. The beauty of the Crosstown shootout when it was in February, closer to when everybody has their rivalry games, is that you've got a good half season underneath your belt. Like it means a lot to have that. Right. And you know, for both teams, they were doing it middle of conference schedule. So it's like, all right, you've got these conference schedules going on, and then all of a sudden, boom, you've got this huge rivalry game right. sandwiched right in the middle. It's a big deal. Now when it happens in December, it's forgotten about by the time anything happens. Well, like It's just another game, And you were talking about how there's so much time afterwards to recoup from it. And, and think about ever since they moved this game to early in the season, the it's almost like this – determines the trajectory for teams. Like when you look back to the fight and and Xavier and you said that like there was the suspended players and it was okay, who's going to recover from this? UC ended up going on to recover well. Xavier tanked after that. They yeah. they played poorly after that fight. You would think that'd be like a galvanizing thing and instead the the team sort of fell apart that season. But this this game tends to be the turning point for the season and it's December. Like it, it, so there's no chance for it to be a turning point, it's, right? It, it, again, it just is another game, right? It's so disappointing. Um, I'm with you on because like 100%. win or lose, it really doesn't affect anything. Yeah, like you you haven't established who you are as a team yet by the, the you know first weekend in December. So how do you know? Like you know, there's plenty of time to either recover or change things by then. It, it's why I just, I hate it being so early. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this one at all. Uh, but looking at UC's schedule coming up, uh, we got Drake they're playing uh, and not... I'll give a damn about no Drake night. I would like this better if it was a team comprised entirely of Aubrey. Like, that would be a pretty cool team if it was uh, we're playing five Drakes. So at halftime when they're down, they're all switching teams? Yeah, or they're all just Switching wearing. Allegiances? They're all wearing different jerseys throughout the game, so you don't know who exactly <laughs> throwing you off the set. <laughs> Sounds right. Uh, but that game's coming up on Monday, so you see, that's definitely going to be a W for you. See, I mean, you're, you don't lose to Drake for sure. Uh, and then we will have another show that gets recorded uh, before they play Alabama A and M. That's another W. So UC has the potential to be two and one, three and zero if this Ohio State game changes uh, mm -hmm. in the middle of this recording. They could be 3-0 going into next week. At that point, I feel like UC is well within the top 25. Absolutely. Depending on, I mean, depending on how these Drake and Alabama a and But this, this game against Ohio State, I feel like win or lose, the fact that you're taking Ohio State and and – They'll making this a big game, you you're getting you know you're at that bottom level receiving votes. Trounce Drake and then trounce Alabama A and M, and you're in the top twenty five. And yeah. now that cross down shootout is looking real fun. Yeah, but again, it's like I know it's early. I know, but no, but I, I want thing, it to like, mean something where it's like all right, both teams are ranked, both teams are doing. You, well. you definitely want both teams to come in like doing, but. I mean, these two teams, it, it doesn't matter anymore, like, where you had them ranked in the top 10 or whatever right, a few right. years ago when it was, like, a big deal mid-February. It's like, these two teams could be ranked in the top 10 in, in December, on December 7th, and it would mean very little because both of them, again, win or right. lose, could then go on to have seasons that still means that they both could be there at the end. So it's like, uh, really... They got it right by moving it back to the campuses. They've got to get it more right by moving it back to the middle of the season. <laughs> like, this December oh, crap those just games is at, not working. Those games at Heritage Bank Arena now. <laughs> that's oh, weird, God. right? That's weird. Heritage it's, Bank Arena. It's something. That's a strange... Anyway. Uh, anyways, uh, let's talk UC football. Uh, UC survives in East Carolina. Wins that game 46-43. Giving up 43 points to East Carolina is not good. That's not good. That's that scares the hell out of me. Looking forward to to UC uh, as we're getting into some tough games coming up. You got UConn this week. Chalk that one up. Uh, I mean, UConn's not a great team, so you you figure that one's going to be, be a W. Uh, but and we keep harping back to this Memphis game. <laughs> wow, Joe just pulled it up. <laughs> UC is a 
on on the ESPN matchup predictor, ninety eight point six percent to win the game against UConn. The, the fact, line is thirty five. I, I think it's just funnier that they're giving UConn a one point four percent chance. <laughs> You've got a one percent chance of winning this game. Good luck. The money line is UC minus 18,000. That's unreal. That is absolutely crazy. They're 35 point favorites. Uh, I mean, they were huge favorites going into ECU and they ended up struggling in that one. I feel like this is one of those games that they don't struggle. They they could easily manhandle UConn and, and cover that. The, the calendar is circled though. After Memphis knocks off SMU, that Temple. ending the game against or, or ending, ending the, the season, season against, against Memphis, Memphis. That yeah. is like the new target. Uh, the college football playoff rankings have come out. UC is after that SMU loss. UC is the highest ranked Group of Five team. So win out and you are playing in a New Year's Six Bowl. Period. Like that's that is what Luke Fickle needs to be telling this team every single week. Win out. We're going on New Year's Day. We're playing in a big time bowl. Yeah. Game. Win out. We're going to uh, so. That's where we're at right forget now. Forget the fact that Notre Dame screwed up the storyline and we could have been playing. <laughs> like, forget that. We can still play in the New Year's Day. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, Luke Fickle is just going to be going in and auditioning. Uh, right now the predictions are Cotton Bowl against Utah, who we talked about on the well, – but we talked about on the regular show – I know, but just sneaky number nineteen, right? Yeah, in but the country. It, from a, a a sexy matchup standpoint, right? Like, no, 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 no. That's yeah, not yeah. moving the needle one way or the other, <laughs> right? That's the. You think hey. Jerry would be happy with that game? Oh, it's Jerry. in Jerry's world. Do you think he's like, no? Oh, I'm pissed. gonna go watch Utah and Cincinnati. <laughs> nope. He, I'm good. Hang on a second. He'd probably figure out a way to move that game. Hang out on of the a stadium. second. Jerry does not say Cincinnati. Jerry one hundred percent says Cincinnati. For sure. Cincinnati. He, he calls them Cincinnati, uh, and then he calls Utah the Mormons. That he doesn't refer to them as Utah. He's like, wait, I gotta watch. I gotta watch the Mormons. No, nah, he throws an R. Utah. <laughs> Utah. And Cincinnati. <laughs> If you're a big time UC fan, is that the matchup you want for your big time bowl game? Do you want Utah? I mean, I guess no. But but I mean, they're a top ten team in a mean, ranking. So if you're talking about just like from a pure, we've got a good chance. I mean, I know to we talked about game. like Florida is yeah, like the, I mean, the yeah. story. If you're line, talking about but... again, if you're talking about just a hey, we've got a really good chance to win this bowl game, and that's all that matters for our program. Then yeah, I mean, Utah's a pretty solid. But is Utah one of those games that like if you win it? Oh no 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 no, no, like... no! Nobody else will care. Right. I feel like Utah... It'll people, just be good for you or the program to say, we won the Cotton Bowl. It, it, well, there you go. That's it's it. not it against, against the top anybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The yeah. biggest thing is right now, the loss to Ohio State or Ohio State's win over them is what a lot of people are saying has propelled them yeah. to number one. So does UC tank and get Ohio State to make that look like a way worse win? <laughs> that would be hilarious if they're like, we hate Ohio State so much that we're going to punt a game. <laughs> Now that Ohio State non-conference win does not look good, right? Yeah, I think that, it would, bounced, that would actually down a be little. really funny. <laughs> that would be the ultimate fu from Fickle, just being like, "I'm willing to tank my season in order to ruin Ohio State season a little bit." And that's the thing; it probably doesn't even hurt Ohio State that much. But the the idea that Fickle would do that is so oh, I love it. I love it, uh, and we're Team Petty on this show, so yes, I would, I would want. I, I'd to be do all that. the way here. For it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing! Um, all right, you think you think UC is covering this weekend? Yes. So you're taking UC covering the 35 points against UConn. Ooh, 35. <laughs> Hold on yes, a second. It's 35. I didn't realize the spread is 35 points. I don't know how that didn't make it in the in the, the hat. I don't. I don't know either. I must have missed that one. Dude. All right, let's let's 35. back it up a little bit. Over under is 54 and a half. I'd probably take the over on this one. Yeah, I'll take the over. I'm taking the over. But the 30. Oh, that's. <laughs> You're putting your money down. You're going That's in. So you're many going. Points. You're going uh, to Hollywood Casino this weekend. You're putting the money down. What are you doing? Looking at the stats, Joe pulled it up here. UConn is only averaging twenty points a game. UC's averaging thirty. Uh, UConn's so also thirty five though. Like. But UConn's averaging. They're giving up almost forty points a game. That defense is dog shit. 
Like they're that's a terrible defense. Yeah, but even okay, got. so take what they're averaging getting and what they're averaging giving up, and you still have a twenty point that's that's only twenty points. That's only a twenty <laughs> point difference. Like <laughs> thirty-five. <laughs> Seven touchdowns, man. That's a lot of touchdowns. Or not seven. Especially no, 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 no. It's, it's five. I'm five. It's five. 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 No, before Joe gets on his knees. Oh, almost got you. Oh, you know, five. I got you. You, you see my, you <laughs> hurt, you saw my shoulders and that person. <laughs> I, I, like, I saw Joe taking it. I was huh? like, oh my God, my bath was off. It's like seven times seven is 49. It is, That's wrong. It is the most <laughs> terrifying feeling when Joe perks up over there. Because it's like, oh no, what did I screw up? What did I screw up? Joe's about to I burn got me. you. Yeah, no, no, no. Five touchdowns, though, man. This they could because they could win by four touchdowns. You're like, wow, that's 28 points. That's still a lot of points. Like, but they still came up a touchdown <sighs> short of just breaking even. Okay, they wouldn't so even win that. That's, that's true. That would just push it. Yeah. Uh, so you need to win by five. So plus no, they're not, there's no way. There's no way. Like they'll win by like thirty one or something stupid like that. I'd be tempted to parlay it. I'd be tempted to take the over and have UC cover on nah. this one in a parlay because oh, it's just so. I'll take the over and I'll take you. I'll take UConn. Is Bob Diaco still coaching at UConn or has he been fired? Who's the coach at UConn right now? Because I remember when Bob Diaco got hired at UConn, uh, and and I feel like they stopped caring after what's his name went to Miami. <laughs> Oh right, right. <laughs> like I haven't, oh, I haven't known. Who's... Wait, Randy Etzel is at UConn? No way. Is he really? That's wow. surprising. That is surprising. So how long has Diaco been gone? That's, <laughs> that's how much I paid attention. Two years. <laughs> <laughs> Two years. <laughs> Do you have terrible like memory about stuff like that? Because I feel like uh, that's one of the most amazing things where I'm just like, damn, I I feel like that. Yeah, it was. Uh, 2017 that Diaco was gone. <laughs> Things just blend together in my brain. I feel like it's the kid's fault. Everything just blends together. I'm like, ah, it's, yeah, it's 2015 now, right? Oh, wait. <laughs> wait a second. You mean to tell me I've been out of college for 12 years already? Holy shit. How did that happen? <laughs> All right. So you're going with don't cover, but take the over. Yeah. I'm going to say they, I'm gonna say they cover. Five, man, that's Parlay so that. Boring. Cover Joe, be the tiebreaker here. They cover or they don't cover? Uh, no. <sighs> yeah. Uh, dude, come on. 35, man. Like, because again, it's 35 to push. <laughs> They've got to score more than 35. Only 36, baby. We can. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know how often that comes in. <laughs> that we're 36. I think, what, point. I think where, it could, where it could hurt is they take their foot off the gas towards the end of it. Right. That's the that, only And that's thing. what I'm saying. Yeah, like, yeah. Th they could win by 31 points. That's the four <laughs> touchdowns and a field goal. And you're like, wow, they still came up four points of pushing. Like, and it was a 30 point victory, 31 point victory. So, yeah, there's no way. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. This has been a, a really fun Cincinnati style show. Uh, this, is, this is probably the loosest we've been on this show. I dig it. I dig this feeling. Uh, tune in next week. We're going to do some more hockey, get all into this college basketball season. We'll see that I'm right and Joe and Scott are wrong in terms of covering for UC. Uh, <laughs> so, so be sure to subscribe to the show. Tell your friends about it. If you got any friends that are Cincinnati fans, uh, tell them about our show. You can find us on Podbean, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcast. The videos available every week here on YouTube. Uh, so thank you guys so much for tuning in. In between shows, make sure you follow the show at Craft B Sports. You can follow Scott at Scotty K underscore Junior. Follow me at Mike Burl and follow Joe at Joe Goalie Four. Hit up the drunk line with your sweet Cincinnati sports takes anytime you want. Four four zero thirty seven drunk. Thank you all for tuning in. Cheers, everybody. Peace. We out. Kill. <laughs>